This is class one in our Electrical 101 series. This will be covering how electricity works for cars, trucks, and equipment, from fundamentals to advanced. Hey guys, it's Joshua Depth Tape Channel, and in this video, we're doing Electrical 101 for cars, trucks, and equipment. Now this is a beginner's course. You need zero electrical or mechanical knowledge for this course. And by the end of this course, at least this first episode, you are gonna see what a circuit is. We're gonna make a circuit and show you how a light works. You're gonna know what a volt is, an amp is, what is electricity. So this would be really good for an aspiring mechanic or a student or Maybe someone who just wants to fix their headlight and doesn't know how electricity works. Now the best part of this video is it's free and there's no test at the end. Now, let me tell you a little bit about me first. So I'm a diesel mechanic. I worked for Caterpillar for 17 years. Or I should say cat dealerships for 17 years who currently, currently work at Western States Caterpillar in Idaho. And I work on diesel truck engines. Now you might be saying, what does a diesel engine have to do with electricity? Well, all trucks, at least all modern trucks, use electricity for their engines, for their lights, for their control systems. Also equipment uses electricity. Before this, however, before working on trucks, I used to be a power generation technician. So that was working on large standby and prime generators for casinos, hospitals, also rock crushing plants, stuff like that. So I know how electricity is made. I'm very good at troubleshooting electricity. Now, do I have any formal training in it? I've taken a few electrical classes, but I'm not a physicist. I am not an electrical engineer. But the good part is, you don't have to be. You don't even need a mustache to know how electricity works. Maybe it's better if you don't have one. Let's get into the topic at hand, and we'll get this class started, and hope you enjoy it. What is electricity? Electricity is not an invention. Electricity is a natural phenomenon that we discovered, we being humanity, discovered and have molded to do our bidding. So if you think about lightning or static electricity, these are items that have always existed. You can't really do anything with it, right? I mean, lightning is a bane to many people's existence. Many people have died from lightning. And while it can be good for soil, you can't necessarily harness it unless, you know, you're talking about back to the future for any good means. And static electricity, while interesting, other than zapping a relative when you go to give them a hug you haven't seen in several years, serves no real purpose either. So if you want to do work with electricity, like turn on a light bulb, run a computer, run a fan, you need to be able to reliably produce electricity and then put it into that motor, or that load, whatever it is that it needs to run. So that is the platform what we're going to discuss. So what in essence is electricity? Well, electricity is the movement of electrons through a conductor. That is the most basic scientific explanation of what it is. So what's an electron? You probably know what an electron is. It is the very small subatomic particle that floats around the outside of an atom. And atoms, of course, have three parts. They have electrons, which we just discussed. They have protons and they have neutrons. Now, why are they called electrons and neutrons and protons? Well, it's how they are electrically charged. So a proton is positively charged. A neutron, neutrally charged. An electron is negatively charged. Why are electrons negatively charged? I don't know. Maybe they're just depressed. That's what electricity is. It's basically the little guys floating around the outside of atoms flowing through a conductor. Now when I say conductor, I don't mean the guy with the striped white and blue hat on a train. And we're not gonna go real deep into conductors right now, but basically to explain it, a wire is a conductor. Many things are conductors, but wires for this simple explanation is what we're talking about. How is it formed? Well, this will lead us in two branches, but we're only gonna be going down one branch. Electricity is basically formed generally in one of two ways, at least electricity that we are producing to do our work. There is chemical-based electricity, which would form DC. Now, what do I mean by chemical-based? Well, this is a battery. And a battery is chemicals, basically, that produce electricity. 
And they do that by having plates and different acids inside. In fact, it even says non-spillable sealed lead acid battery. So there's nasty stuff in here, but it produces electricity. Now, what about lights in your house or in your office or your AC unit at your house? That's also run by electricity, but that is AC voltage, whereas a battery is DC voltage. Now we are gonna discuss AC voltage quickly here, basically to just not dismiss it because it is extremely important. However, cars, trucks, equipment don't use AC voltage. They use almost exclusively DC voltage. We're only gonna be discussing DC, which DC predominantly comes from batteries. However, alternators which are on vehicles produce AC and then are rectified, which we will discuss later. So I wanted to differentiate between household voltage. AC in general is a lot more complicated than DC. DC is very simple. However, the principles for how circuits work are the same. Let's get into the terms about electricity so we can discuss what they mean and then we can start discussing how electricity actually works. Okay, folks, so this next section is probably gonna be the most boring section out of all of these classes I'm going to be doing. That's because we're gonna be talking about terms and something called Ohm's Law. In a sit-down class, you would usually spend hours on this and do lots of worksheets and math and homework on it. And I would really like to skip this whole section, but I implore you not to do that. And I didn't do that because while it is not exciting, this is the fundamentals of circuitry and understanding it is important. However, speaking from experience, you do not use Ohm's law as a mechanic really. Maybe occasionally, but it's not something you really are using unless you're in power generation or something where you're constantly calculating amps and stuff like that. But as a mechanic, mostly what you're doing is testing for resistance, bad grounds, how much voltage is in something. And you may be hearing these terms like voltage and grounds and amps and wondering what the heck those are. Well, that's where we get into terms. So I was holding a battery up before. Now this is a small battery. This is a trailer battery, but this could also be used for a motorcycle or something like that. It's small and it's very simple. This is basically a scaled down version of a car battery or basically a large version of a battery you might put in a remote, although the voltage is different. So we need to discuss terms, like I said. And there's really only a few terms we need to understand before we get into building our first circuit. So, like I said, a battery's DC only. And you've probably seen this on batteries before, or maybe you haven't. 12V. Well, that V universally stands for something. And that V stands for voltage. Voltage is... I would say the most critical thing to understand in this class. It's what we're gonna be discussing the most, what we're testing the most. So this is a 12 volt battery. Cars in general are 12 volts. Trucks in general are 12 volts. Some RVs and buses are 24 volt. Uh, equipment, small equipment's usually 12 volt. Larger equipment's usually 24 volt. So the voltage on stuff matters a lot. And believe it or not, if a piece of equipment is 24 volt, it actually still uses a 12 volt battery. It usually just uses two of them. Now, the next one is this 5AH. The H isn't quite as important, but the A is amps. And five amps is the other component of this battery. So the voltage is, voltage to understand it in electrical terms is electro, electric pressure. So if you think of a garden hose, how much water pressure is in there would be the equivalent to how much electrical pressure is in this battery. Now your household circuits are 120 volt generally, at least the United States. So they are 10 times as much voltage as this battery. Now those are AC and these are DC, batteries are DC, but it just goes to show you that voltage, that term is used in both AC and DC. Amps is also used in both and amps is the volume so back to our water hose analogy it's not how much pressure the water has amps is how much water there is if you think of like a 
fireman's hose. It's larger, maybe it's three, a three inch hose. That's the diameter of the hose. It has a lot more volume of water, even if it's the same pressure. I'm not saying they are the same pressure, I'm just saying amps is the amount and volts is the pressure. So keep that in mind. That's basically two thirds of the terms we're gonna be discussing. So the third term, and this is where it starts to get more complicated, it's not in the battery because it has nothing to do with the battery really. And that is resistance. And resistance is measured in ohms, O-H-M. Now the ohm is named after George Ohm who came up with Ohm's law. Now Ohm's law, which we're gonna be discussing now, is basically the mathematic principles that were discovered by George Ohm, as well as others involved in this early testings of electrical systems, but it basically explains how circuits work and the relationship between voltage, amperage, and resistance. So if I say ohms, I'm talking about the resistance. If I say amps, I'm talking about the amount. And if I say volts, I'm talking about the pressure. So now we have moved to the next section where I can't sit down anymore. And the reason for that is we need to go and start drawing what I would call a wiring diagram or a schematic of how a circuit works and actually start using these terms in an application and show you actually how electricity works on a board. And then we're gonna actually build a circuit and show you how to make that battery do something we wanna do, which is turn on a light bulb. Now, before we get into the whiteboard section, time for a little destruction of the week. In this week's destruction of the week, we have some pictures submitted by John. Thank you, John. And this is a C15 with, look at the bluing in the liner there. Had some major overheating, scoring, vertical scoring in the cylinders, as well as the piston, of course. And what caused this, which I've never seen that bluing like that before? Well, that's what happens when your cooling jet fails. Not exactly sure why this cooling jet failed, but without the cooling jet spraying oil on the cylinder and the piston to keep it cool, total destruction ensues. Thank you, John. Let's get back to our class. Okay, guys, so we got our whiteboard here because we're gonna start doing circuit diagrams. We're gonna start showing you how electricity works, at least drawn out in a diagram. And if you ever are doing electrical troubleshooting, you're gonna be using wiring diagrams or schematics. That's what we're gonna be doing here is building them and explaining how electricity works in a circuit. Now, we need to discuss flow or polarity in a DC system to understand what the heck we're talking about here. So much like water in our water hose analogy, electricity flows, but you can't see it flowing like water. And it flows because there's something called polarity. Now a battery always has polarity, which means one side is positively charged. That's usually indicated with a plus or a cross and red. That's the positive side. The negative side is usually indicated with black and a minus. Now, there's two theories with how electricity actually flows. Electrons, remember, are negatively charged, so that would mean there's a surplus of electrical energy on the negative side flowing to the positive side. That's called the electron theory. And I believe technically that is how electricity flows. But for circuit diagrams, and pretty much everything else, we're gonna be following something called the conventional theory. And the conventional theory says that current flows from the positive to the negative. Does it really matter? No, unless you're on a molecular level or building computer chips or something. But for our purposes, we're gonna be saying electricity flows from positive to negative because that's what they call the conventional theory. And that's mostly what we do in the automotive, trucking and equipment world. So a battery, just like the one we have there, is going to be denoted by just a box. And you have your positive and your negative. And generally, it said the positive is indicated with red. 
and the negative is usually black. So this is the base. Now remember we were discussing voltage. Does anyone remember what the battery is? Most batteries at least are 12 volts. So we're gonna denote that with 12. So that's the base of our circuit. This is the source of where the electricity is going to be coming out of. So without this, you can't do anything. A wire by itself does nothing. So let's do the simplest circuit possible. Now circuits are drawn this way and what we're gonna be drawing is wires. So we're gonna, we want this to get over here and do work because we have a surplus of electrons on one side and there's pressure, there's voltage between, there's a plate or generally lots of plates between these two. So these can't directly get into there, so they have to find a way around. If electricity has a, a way of getting and equalizing that voltage, that pressure, it will. So what you have to do is connect wires or conductors to them. So this is a wire. That wire is going to come up and go to something. Remember, the point of electricity is to do something. You don't just have a battery for no reason. It has to do something. So what are we going to have the battery do? Well, how about a light bulb? Okay. So this battery, the wires, we have pressure all the way up to here, right? So this wire is gonna come out on both sides of the light bulb. We're then gonna connect it. Now generally, it's gonna have some sort of connector, like a plug, which usually on wiring diagrams is denoted by two arrows. So let's say this is a headlight or any sort of light. The lights that are illuminating me right now, you can see one right here, right? That's actually over here, but now that's not 12 volts because it's coming out of the wall, so it's 120 volts, but we now have a source for the electricity to get to this light. Now, is this light gonna turn on as it is now? It's got voltage going to it, right? No, no, it's not. Remember I said the electrons have to flow. If they're not moving through the circuit, nothing's happening. Even if there's voltage here, you could take, we're gonna start using a different term, multimeter here and measure, and you'd have 12 volts from here to here. But since this part is not going back to the battery, there's no flow, this light is not turning on. So if you took, we'll just do another connector, and took this wire here into the ground side, as we'll call it, or the negative side, this light would immediately turn on. Illuminate the world, right? So as long as it's plugged in and there's 12 volts here, our little electrons conventional theory here, are going to be moving in the conductor up through this filament. Then they're gonna go back to the battery on the ground side or the negative side as we call it. That is a circuit. That's the simplest circuit you could possibly have. Now, how long is this light gonna stay on? In this scenario, it'll stay on until the negative and the positive have equalized in pressure. There's zero volts. When this gets to zero volts, because all the electrons are flowing through the circuit and equalizing the voltage's pressure, equalizing the pressure on both sides, when that gets to zero, this light turns off. Now, technically, as this drops in voltage, the light's gonna get dimmer and dimmer but that's how a simple circuit works. So that is the simplest circuit you could possibly imagine, just a light. This is what we call a series circuit also because everything's in one line. And we'll discuss parallel circuits and stuff in the next video because I don't want this video to be three hours long, but we've discussed voltage and how electrons flow in a circuit. So. What's next? Well, what's next is how much current, remember amperage? We discussed amps, amps is the amount of electrons. How much 
how many amps, I should say, are flowing in this circuit. Remember the battery had voltage, 12 volt, five amp hours. Amps are also a very important portion of circuits. So the amount of electrons, not the pressure, but the amount is amps. So let's say for simplicity's sake, one amp, one amp's flowing in this circuit. That's the amount. Now remember that this battery had a rating of five amp hours. So at 12 volts, it would flow five amps for an hour, or it would flow one amp for five hours because it's five amp hours, right? So this battery, assuming this light's pulling one amp, it, this battery would power this circuit pulling one amp for five hours. Makes sense? Okay, so that is a circuit, that's an amp, that's voltage, that's how that part works. If we know the amps and we know the volts, we can discuss something called a watt. Watt? Watt, W-A-T-T. -T. A watt equals your volts times your amps. So we have one amp times 12, what does it say, V. So how many watts do we have? We have 12 watts. Watts are a unit of energy. There's 746 watts are equal to one horsepower. So if you ever see a one horsepower motor, that means 746 watts drive that motor. It's good to know. So if you hear a Tesla is so many horsepower, you convert, convert that into watts and tell you how many amps and volts it's making. It's, all this is very useful. So watts, volts times amps. And remember we were discussing ohms. Ohm's law, but ohms are resistance. So resistance is the light bulb, also called the load. Many names for it, but any load is what this whole circuit, the point of it is. This Maybe this isn't a light. Maybe it's a fan or a computer or a lighter, or there's a thousand things electricity can power, but lights are the simplest because you can see them illuminate. So Ohm's law, and I showed you the picture there earlier, is I, now I don't know why they use I, it stands for intensity. I is your amps, this guy, is equal to your voltage, voltage over R, if you're a pirate. Voltage is this guy, and your R, your resistance is how many ohms is the load, the light, whatever it's driving. So we can determine how much resistance this light is having because we know it's making one amp. And we have 12 volts. Well, what's 12 over R? 12. It has to be because we're pulling one amp. So we know that one amp is equal to 12 volts over 12 ohms. Now, ohms are indicated by the omega symbol, which is kind of like a weird octopus looking upside down you guy. So, we know that. Now, you can mess with this and change all your numbers. If you hooked this same light up, the resistance wouldn't change. It's still a 12 ohm resistance light. But let's say you hooked it up to a 24 volt system. And this is Ohm's law. This is what I was talking about before. This is no longer one. This is now two, right? Because you've got twice the voltage, same resistance, two amps. This is Ohm's law right here. This in a classroom, if you were taking an electrical class, you'd spend a lot of time on. But I'm just explaining how it works. If you're having trouble understanding it, I highly recommend going and finding some Ohm's Law worksheets and spending a lot of time doing the math until you get this under control. Now this can also, with that formula, I is equal to V over R, you can determine resistance if you know your amps and your volts, you can 
determine your volts, if you know your amps and your resistance, it's useful, especially in engineering, but as mechanics, you actually do not almost ever use this. So that is our simple circuit. That's how electricity flows in it. That's voltage. And that's how it works. This is the first day of the first class. So that is for this class's sake, all she wrote, except for I actually want to show you this simple circuit. And I'm going to do that and film it. And you can see actually what it looks like. So what we've got here is our old friend, the battery. And same one I was showing you before, 12 volt, five amp hour battery out of a trailer. And this is what they call a multimeter, which I had mentioned earlier. It's also called a digital voltage ohm meter. It'll read volts, it'll read amps, it'll read resistance, it'll also do things for diodes and polarity, not really anything we're gonna be messing around with that much. But very simple, this is a Fluke, and Fluke makes many different models. And I'll put a link in the description if you're gonna to wanna to get one from Amazon or something. But they're very simple to use, very safe to use, and really what they're good for is testing electrical systems. So we've got it on volts DC right now. And we're actually gonna see, even though this is a 12 volt battery, what is the voltage of this battery? What do you think it is? Well, 12 volt batteries are generally actually 12.6 volts. Now, if you notice, if you just put a lead to one terminal at a time, you don't read anything. It has to be going to both terminals because you're measuring the potential difference in voltage between the two. We're at 12.49, so we'll just say 12.5. So is it a 12 volt battery? It sure is. So with that 12 volts, what can you do? Well, we're gonna make a circuit, and we're gonna make the simplest circuit, which is basically what we drew before. This is a test light. It has a very little light filament, it has basically a conductor on the left, which is a metal spike, and it has a wire with an alligator clip on it. This is, for our intents and purposes, the exact same circuit that we were drawing. So if you put the positive lead that goes to the light and then ground it on the other side, will it illuminate? Of course it will. It's a light, it's a simple circuit. This is actually an electrical testing tool that's very useful for seeing where you've got current and grounds. Now, lights in general will also work in reverse polarity. See? So we have just made the same circuit we were drawing, and as you can see, it works just fine. This concludes the first class. Hope you enjoyed. Be sure to catch the next one. Thanks for watching.